It's time to finish what we've started. We've made a lot of progress. We've really pushed into Cathay, but we have not yet completely taken it over. We're getting close though. So down here, we have Zetan to Black. He's going after the Dark Elf still. He's on his own now. I moved my other army away because we needed him elsewhere. Now over here, we are at war with these guys as well. They only have one settlement left. I took the uh, first one, their main settlement, at the end of the last episode. There's one army of theirs here. Our army here is pretty solid, and we are in the settlement. We do have a little bit of a garrison to help us. We should be fine if they attack us. Down here... The western provinces are still thriving quite a bit. They got a very good confederation there. Got like six settlements off of that. There are eight total. A little bit to the north of them. Two of our armies here. We're moving over to Shangyang here. Uh, we're going to see if we can take this over. My one concern with that is that Grimgor might come out here and see if he can attack us. But he is quite busy here. He's in a lot of wars. He's being attacked on all sides. And he's not doing as well as he once was. He's no longer strength rank 1. I am strength rank 2. And I'm quite a decent bit stronger than him. So honestly, I'm surprised he doesn't want peace with me, given the number of wars that he's in and the extent to which he's stopped winning them. And that's about it. Those are the three fronts of the war that we are currently fighting, and we appear to be winning on all of them. I am a little concerned about this Black Ark. It hasn't attacked me yet. I thought it was going to earlier, like four turns ago, but it just didn't. So since then, I've been ignoring it, assuming it's not going to attack me. I think we're going to go for the defensive alliance with Clan Eshin. Not because we need to, but just because they've been so helpful. Our convoys are going well here. It's going to be a little while before they reach their destinations. This one is insanely profitable for some reason. Ah, Grimgor Ironhide. Not coming to attack me, going the exact opposite way. Thank you very much, buddy. Oh, actually, never mind. He is coming to attack me as well, but not with the majority of his forces. That could be a problem there. They're probably going to back off, but that's fine. Uh, we just kill them next turn. This is probably going to be difficult. Man, actually, not that bad. We do have some good spells on this lord. We have the Burning Head. Most importantly here, our Hobgoblin Archers are full health, and they do have Flaming Attacks. They don't have Magic Attacks, though, uh, but Flaming Attacks will help against the Regeneration Units here. Ooh, kind of hate this map. Maybe if we stick over here? God, our, we're, we're going to be downhill no matter where we are. Except for maybe here, but I don't know if we have enough space here. Uh, we, we kind of do there. We do have eight blunderbusses here, which is probably equivalent to one full unit of hobgoblin archers, to be completely honest. <laughs> oh, and actually, because these units have contempt, if we just hide them kind of into our front line, that will increase our leadership significantly on our real units. It increases the leadership of these lads by eight. So that is very, very good. You could go right after their lord here. He's just kind of exposed. The waterfall in the background, the knives up front, the flaming arrows going in. This is a beautiful fight right here, especially with the magic as well. You're really not doing a very good job of killing their lord, though. Please do that. What do we want to be targeting here? We probably want to be targeting the crypt horrors for now. Who needs melee defense? Oh god, all of you need melee defense. Uh, you will get it. The balance of power is even, but I'm not loving how our front line is holding up, or rather not holding up. Uh, we'll toss this here again. I probably should have done that a few seconds earlier. Still, though, going to get value, and our lord is almost dead. Once their lord dies, they're going to start crumbling a lot easier. I'm not going to say that they're all going to crumble immediately, but they will crumble faster. Their lord is about to die. And, yeah, he just exploded. He literally exploded when he got headbutted by the Great Taurus. That was beautiful. Oh, poor buddy. He's not going to necromance his way out of that, I think. Uh, he will be taking a lot of damage in melee there, but he's just going to have to tank for a little bit. This is looking good. This terrain really saved us. If we got flanked and all that, that would have been rough. I meant to put that a little further to the left. Hopefully we're not going to get friendly fire there. Uh, not a ton of damage from that, but enough. Oh god, we are running out of ammo. We are actually running out of ammo. Uh, you get into melee there. You back off here. We should have just, and I mean like within a couple of volleys, uh, enough ammo to win this. That was not an easy one, but we got it. I think I could have done that a little more effectively, but not by a lot. That was definitely a Pyrrhic victory. Um, very solid. We did not lose a single, single one of our real units. That is crazy. We got probably within like one model of losing this guy, but we didn't. The extra leadership from these Chaos Dwarf Warriors, even though they were in themselves worthless, that was immensely useful. Immensely. But what happened to the rest of the screen, you ask? Where is everything else? Well, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. Things from now on out are going to be a little bit different in this video. I'm going to be doing a different style of content than usual because I made a bit of a mistake. I made an error, a minor lapse in judgment. Uh, that is, I recorded the rest of this in 1080p, which in itself, not a problem. The problem is I recorded the top left 1080p. The, the bottom right bits are gone. 
So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be explaining kind of what happened in between battles, and then I'm going to be showing the replays of all the interesting and cool battles that happened. I think that can be really fun. I've actually been thinking about doing this style of video for a while, but this is a pretty obvious motivation to try this now rather than waiting around. So naturally after this I chased them down, I did end up beating them here, and I didn't take too much damage. I did lose this one unit of hobgoblins. So what Lokir Felhart's done there is he has two armies that he just moved up there in Force March, one of them in the settlement, one of them outside of it, and a third army is right in my face going for an ambush. Also, the Beastmen decided to declare war on me for no apparent reason, very annoying. So, from here, all I did was move up an encamp stance a little bit, but a boom, discovered the ambush. Not that hard, just go into encamp stance. That's why you don't ambush immediately next to, like, another player or someone with a brain other than the AI. Now, from here, I don't unfortunately have lightning strike yet, so I did have to fight both of these first armies. Although, fortunately, they weren't in the reinforcement uh, range of this garrison. So I just fought these two armies, and this is the battle I'm about to show you. This was one of the best battles throughout this entire campaign, honestly. This battle was an absolutely gorgeous one. I love this map. I love this matchup, because they're so simple to defeat. They have a few ranged units. They are good. They are AP. Dark shards are awesome. But the Dread Spears are not going to hold up very well against Sneaky Gits. That is incredibly favorable for us. Now, they started up here. Uh, in a kind of stupid formation. They've kind of split up. Let me pause for a second here. They've split up their forces. They have like four units here. All right. They have about four or five units here. And then they have the majority of their first army here. Now, all I do here is I move up with the Hobgoblins that he gets and I kill them. Yes, that is a summon of the Cutthroats and they just completely disrupted them. Now, all of these units, all of them, like 15 units here are disrupted by those Cutthroats. They're forced to stand in place for at least a few seconds. The cutthroats don't last long, but they last long enough for me to land some really good volleys, turn them around a little bit here, and charge in without them getting any charge bonus or braced bonus, which is wonderful. Right now, we're already routing at least four or five of these units. Uh, Zatenda Black has terror on him with his mount, so they're all routing now. I kind of moved most of my units back because I want them to come back through this choke point. That's just very efficient for me. Uh, but I also sent a few units up to try to chase them down, make sure they don't come back too much. And they did with the second army decide to mostly go on this left side, and partially go on this even further and dumber left side. I don't know why they're all the way over here. The balance of power is already pretty good. Five minutes into the battle, not too long. We've already wiped out pretty much the entirety of the first army. Eventually, yeah, right now they're already starting to send their units back and forth. They start to really panic and not know what to do because they're the AI and therefore stupid once I move the majority of my army back here. Ah, uh, yeah, they're just extremely indecisive. That's always extremely good. The more indecisive the AI is, the bigger the advantage a player has, generally. We're really moving all the way behind them. We still have these guys there as a distraction to kind of bait them into coming further in there. Uh, and you can see they're very scattered here. They have one unit of Dark Shards very far up here, so I charge them in just a second. But the rest of them are kind of going for a formation facing completely the opposite direction. Oh no, they've come back, they've come back. Uh, but temporarily, they were just facing the wall there, which is where none of us are. That's the only place on the battlefield that has zero of our units. It's very impressive that they managed to find that. And yeah, we do get a very good, very favorable engagement here. I honestly forgot how good he is. Already 45% ward save, 61% ward save. Yeah, so now he's at over 90% missile resistance effectively, which is the cap regardless. So he's taking no damage from those dark shards. Uh, the archers are doing a lot of work, and unfortunately these guys from this army over here, well, not separate army, separate part of the army, decided to come back. Now I set my units over here to stop them, but they stopped first. They just stopped moving first. No reason for that, no idea why they did that. Unfortunately, we now have a lot of damage on these sneaky gets, mostly from the uh, magic. So I was going to send Zatend Black over here, but then I realized their lord here is flying and extremely killable. Unfortunately, she is getting some magic casts off, but I can just stop that by, well, doing this. That was like a third of her health in one chunk. She will not last long here. Fortunately, we got the army losses on them before we needed to slog through this big old clump. One Flamestorm or any other cast that's like a stationary AoE damage would have been so incredible here, but I don't have that in this army. No magic at all. That's honestly probably the biggest difficulty, uh, at least with Zatanna Black's army. He is much weaker than he would be with magic. If we had a good caster in there, I would say we'd be 30-40% stronger as an army. And I ended it off in just a second here. Yeah, I didn't bother chasing them all the way down because we didn't really need to. They were already pretty weak. Like a quarter of one of these armies survived. I think it was just like four units out of this was all that survived this. So here we're actually going to be watching the battle that was much, much easier against Loki or Felhart and that settlement garrison. Now the reason we're watching this one is because I employed a strategy that I don't usually use 
mostly just to show it off and show off how powerful it is. Loki or Felhart's army, you can't see it quite yet, but it is almost exclusively ranged units. It is like 95% various types of crossbows. And you can see his army right there. It is all but two units are crossbows. Uh, but they have a two minute reinforcement timer. This army is a joke. It's not really a concern. They're all very slow. I just use these guys to kind of distract them and run away from them. I have them on skirmish mode for once. I don't usually. And we're trying to get all of our units because we have mostly, not exclusively, but mostly melee units to kind of just block off this pass. This is an absolutely perfect spot to wall camp them and hold them in. In here in a second, and let's see how much damage we do here. I do start a little further back. I wouldn't always do this, but both for our charge bonus and for our ranged weapons here, that is good. Uh, they got a very unfortunate cast here. It could have done a lot more damage. I wasn't even paying attention to it because I was focusing on moving these guys up. Uh, now, Loki or Felhart is on a dragon, a big old black dragon. The way I deal with this is by simply locking him in place in just a second here with Zathenda Black's uh, bound ability, and then shooting him with every single one of my archers. It is gorgeous. And he's going to be frozen in just a second. There's that net. And oh my lord, he's going down very quickly here. One more volley, maybe two more, and he goes down incredibly fast. That is six or seven units of archers shooting him. Down to 2,000 HP, one more volley, and he should be dead. The way that dragon flops down is so cool. So awesome. Absolutely amazing effect. The enemy lord is wounded now, and we are forcing all of these dark shards and other units into melee. Specifically into melee with anti-infantry units, which are going to be incredibly effective against them. We have Zatenda Black in here with his terror as well. They're already starting to rout, and we are hitting them with the flaming attacks too. I think this was pretty much perfect. I don't usually say that. I'm not usually the most efficient player. Like, I generally do things well, I know what to do, my execution is not the best, but here the execution is very easy. This is a strategy that I would recommend using if you want to play on higher difficulties and you're struggling. This is so often the difference between victory and defeat, especially if you can intentionally get into positions where you're fighting the weaker army first and the stronger army is going to come in later. That is such a good opportunity to fight a battle like this where... I mean, we lost maybe a few dozen sneaky gits. We lost so, so little, and we absolutely coated the ground with their bodies. You cannot see the dirt between the Dark Elf corpses here. It is beautiful. We didn't even use much of our ammo. And one thing, this was not a decisive victory. This was a close victory. This 31 loss battle, where I wipe out a stack and a half with no damage on my lord or hero... So yeah, that allowed me to get the Lee Temple and pretty much all of this region and also wipe out the vast, vast majority of their balance of power. And now we'll pretty much skip to the next really interesting battle that I saved the replay of. I think that's going to be the best way to do this. So it's turn 42 and we have a little bit of a problem here. The Beastmen declared war on us quite a bit earlier, like three, four turns ago, and finally it's actually become a problem. Fortunately, I did have the foresight to build up an army here, but I only got one turn of recruitment before these guys attacked. If I do accept this auto resolve, I probably would lose a follow-up fight. These guys would probably come back and wipe me out, so I'm not gonna do that. What I am gonna do instead is fight this and hopefully win. Ooh, one more thing. I did get the Dreadquake Battery faction-wide in my territory through the Tower of Czar here. There's been quite a few changes here. We're around Tier 2 now. Uh, we finished all of Tier 1. I don't have all of the bonuses I want, but they're really expensive to get. I'll probably get that back eventually. The Sigor here is quite terrifying. It has a lot of rocks that it throws at us. Now, I don't know where it stores those rocks. You can observe if there is anywhere on the outside of this creature where it could store those rocks and potentially infer where it does store those rocks based off of this, because I don't see any rocks on the ground here. So they are somewhere on or in its person. Pretty balanced army. They do have the Tuscagore Chariots here, right in the trees, because the Chariots are extremely, extremely anti-infantry. I'm sending my Wolf Raiders to deal with them, and we'll see how we do here. Uh, the Chariots did not going to charge him, which is pretty much the only way they get value. They're not very good at extended combat. We have three units of the Wolf Raiders here, all melee and all like rank 5 or 6 here. Let's see how much value these guys have gotten. Uh, five kills, 100 gold value. That is way less than they're worth, and two of them just got destroyed. They should not really be doing anything of value from now on. Fortunately, the Saigor is kind of behind the trees there. I thought that would stop the rocks, and it kind of does, but not very consistently. They send up the Chaos Warhounds quite early right into the laborers here, but the laborers actually do a decent job of stopping them. 
and fortunately they're coming at me with part of their army first. They're leaving these guys behind uh, to begin with. Now they really start sending up the bulk of their army. They have the Minotaurs in here right in the center. They start taking a lot of damage very quickly. I immediately hard target them. Already down to half health. Uh, they have some of the Ungor herds, the Gore herd coming in here, their Lord. And yeah, those Minotaurs are not lasting very long. Got to love those flaming arrows. It is time to make our foes quake with dread. This is the dread quake battery. I didn't use it super efficiently, but you can see here there's three bombs coming down from the sky. And the third one. Oh, that hit them pretty hard. Didn't entirely wipe out a full unit, but very close. Actually, no. With the AoE damage afterwards, it did pretty much wipe out a full unit of Ungor Raiders. Decent bit of damage on these Ungor Spearmen, and a little damage on these guys as well. You can see just the gore here. It is, it is quite gnarly. I did make a mistake, though. I didn't realize how big of a blob these guys were about to form here. Let's take a look at this. Four units here, including a gore herd. I should have dropped it right there. That would have been better. Oh yeah, here we come in with the uh, Wolf Raiders, and I almost charged into these guys, but I caught it at the last second, and I managed to get a very nice charge over here, tossing those Ungor Raiders. That is beautiful. Over here as well. Uh, these guys should come in in a second. Let's see this. Let's see this. Oh, very solid. Very solid. Even though we have low mass, so the day, and very quickly, even though we're at low health, tearing through these guys. These were both basically full health before we got into them. And yeah, both of them are broken. Now we're running out the back, uh, and we managed to get out there with a little bit of health left. These Chaos Dwarf Warriors are putting in a shit ton of work there. Already got over 130 kills, just about to be 140. The Orc Laborers are not doing too bad either. They have a lot of value. Wow, 500 gold value? That is honestly more than I thought they could get. You, Saigor, you are throwing through the trees, right? Oh yeah, he is. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh my god. Yeah, most of them just died on impact there. That was not good. They have managed to get their lord into our archers, but he's not killing them very quickly. Fortunately, this guy is very large. He's a big old boy. He's quite fat, quite chunky. And my lord is not. He's a tiny little guy. So what we're doing is we're shooting this lad in the back while he fights our lord, which is extremely, extremely efficient here because we're getting virtually no friendly fire. Unfortunately, though, our lord is taking a lot of damage, so I do want to bring these guys in, but they're also short enough that we're not going to be shooting them too much. I do honestly think that the, um, the orc laborers have the biggest discrepancy between how strong they look and how strong they are. Oh, that was the army losses, though. That was the army losses. And we chased them down quite a bit, but that was a very efficient fight. That was really good. After this, we dealt with a pretty boring siege battle down here. It was nothing to write home about. I just won by getting the control point, so I'm not going to bother showing it. And up here, we are building up this army even more. Uh, so we'll chase them down a little bit. Uh, I really do want to wipe these guys out. Fortunately, they only have one settlement. And here we are. This is where we ended off the cursed recording session of 1080p. Uh, we built up this army a little more. We started pushing in a little more here. Uh, we're on turn 44. We have a lot of good stuff going on with our economy. We're now earning almost 7,000 gold a turn. I did get rid of one army and also just built up a lot of buildings to increase our income. Oh, and we also did fight these guys. We lost that battle by a thin margin, but we did way more damage to them than they did to us. I did forget to save the replay for that one, though, unfortunately. But honestly, it was mostly boring. It, it was a lot of just kiting them and slowly grinding them down. It was not the most interesting battle. Over here, I'm going ballsy. I'm going aggressive. With this army, I am trying to attack Shang I already defeated one small army here as well, and these guys will be able to reinforce us next turn as we go for that. Over here, I'm building up a little more just because I don't know if slash when I will need more forces, and I have so much gold that it would be stupid for me to save it at this point. And down here, mostly the Skaven have taken over the territory. I was hoping to get this, but the Skaven have taken it, and they are my military allies now, so I'm just going to leave that. They're honestly doing fine. We only need uh, four more settlements for the short victory. Uh, yeah, no balance of power, no balance of power, virtually no balance of power compared to us, and no balance of power. Quite a lot of balance of power. I haven't seen them once yet, but that is a lot of balance of power. Loki or Felhart on the dragon back there. Hmm, problem. Ah, they do have their legendary lord back here, although he has not got an army yet. This guy refuses to attack my settlements. He just likes loitering in my territory. That is Loki or Felhart. I might go for peace with him because I don't really need to take the rest of his settlements. And also, he looks like he's going to take my small settlement there next turn, probably. So I, I think it makes more sense to go for peace with him. Oh, they do have a little balance of power. Either their second army is back here, or they're going for an ambush. But that would be weird. There's no downside to just moving up 
in camp stands a little bit and then swapping back out, so I'll try that. Oh, well, I'm I'm very glad I did. How, what? How do they have this many forces when their balance of power is just a sliver? They're still intercepting me. They're still attacking me, even though this is a decisive victory, low casualties for me. That's very weird. I don't know what they're doing there. That's no damage. How is he? It's, we're turn 45 and he's rank two. Never have I seen a, a legendary lord or just any notable character that low level at this point in the campaign. Oh, I fucking hate that map. Actually, it's not bad for me. I, I hate it in general, but for this army, it's good for me. Yeah, you're shit. I, I don't know how you haven't leveled up. Even just like passively, you should have leveled up, right? That's crazy. It looks almost like an engineering dorm, to be honest. We're going to try and block off this whole area. That's what we're going to do, and we're going to go with just a very basic line of archers. I might check her board a tiny bit, but not very much. Oh, they are going up the side there. That's bad. I don't like that. Uh, we're going to have you two probably block that off, and you guys are going to be stretched thin here. And we are now going to toss the Armor of Content there. Unfortunately, did not get to brace against the Centigors, but we can push into them a little bit and hopefully get some value. Target the Centigors. They are very high DPS. Uh, and the rest of you, I'm going to see if we can target the best Agors here. All right, all right, we're going to need to use these guys. We're, this is going to be too close otherwise. Come back there and then charge into their rear. It's not perfect, but it'll do. It'll get some value. Centigors almost going down. That's very good. Vestigors not really going down. That's not as much damage as I was hoping for. Rear charging units is always very effective. Or at least usually very effective. It depends how high tier your cav are versus their units. Oh, oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. We got stuck in there. Oh god, we're just running in circles there. What the fuck are we doing? Uh, we should actually break them fast enough here that that doesn't matter, though. Do we need to turn over this way again? No, we're holding well enough on that right side. Unfortunately, our lord is routing. We do need to actually focus on these guys in the middle, I'm thinking. And then right after they break, we're going to focus on these guys on the right. Is that a Bestigor herd? Uh, yes, it is. We're going to target them. Unfortunately, they have broken into our archers, but I'm thinking they're going to get the army loss in a matter of seconds here. These guys are holding extremely well. This must be... Oh, because they can't get flanked here. They can't get flanked at all here. That's why they did so well. I mean, these guys did notably extremely well in melee against units that were way higher tier than them just because they couldn't get flanked at all. That was very good. Why is it always a goddamn close victory? Can't get one decisive victory to save my life in this campaign. It just, it will not happen with the Hobgoblins. Very good, they are completely gone now, and it's just a matter of probably taking the rest of the settlements that they already destroyed. So the problem is, I can't get down here in one turn, and I also can't really get back up here in time to stop him taking my small settlements. I could build up another army and stuff like that, but I just don't think it's worth it. I think I just take the peace treaty and the 5,000 gold. Yeah, we're gonna besiege this, and we're gonna take this. Uh, attrition has done quite a number on us, as has the last small army we fought here. But awesome, awesome. That is a good auto resolve. I'm going to take that because that would be about the same as the real fight, I think. To the extent that there is a trick to the campaigns I'm doing, it is bum rushing the enemy, wiping as many of them out as possible, and becoming one of the top like three factions before anyone else starts recruiting tier three plus units. <laughs> By turn 30 or 40, if you manage to be in the top 5 strength rank, and you have a shit ton of armies, even if you're using the most garbage units in the game, you can snowball faster than the AI does, at least on very hard. This is way harder on legendary. So we're gonna grab this. Nice, free tower. Well, 1000 gold tower. Uh, and then we're also not going to fight these guys. We're just gonna sidestep them and occupy this. Is that actually the short victory? Oh my god, that was the short victory right there. I'm going to do a couple more little battles here, take over the rest of Cathay, but yeah, short victory complete. And we should be able to grab Tai Zhu and fully wipe out the Western provinces. Well, actually, there is one more settlement after this one, but oh, I was going to move my second army up, but I literally just don't need to to auto resolve that. Awesome. And then we're going to be taking this. Yeah, that's all I wanted to get. That's everything north of the river and a little bit south of it as well. They're all dead. Northern Cathay, Western Cathay, all of the major Cathayan factions. There's these guys down here, but they haven't even declared war on me. I believe that will be it for the Hobgoblin campaign. So, a few things for the future. My next video is not going to be on Total War Warhammer 3. My next video is going to be on Project Zomboid. I don't know if all of you guys will be interested in that. 
but in two to three weeks, I will be releasing that video. Maybe four. Uh, I really want to make that video as good as it can possibly be because it's my intro into a new game. I have been stewing on ideas for Project Zomboid since before I even made my first Warhammer video. The first edited gameplay video in this style that I ever made was on Project Zomboid, but I didn't release it because it was shit. And now I feel like I can make good videos on most of the games that I enjoy playing. So I'm going to be doing that. I do think that Total Warhammer is always going to be a significant part of the channel. I would say 70 to 80% of the overall videos that I'm making. But I think it's going to be really good for me enjoying making videos. Because if I'm constantly making videos only on one game... I know for a fact I will get bored with it. But if I'm getting a little bit of variety in there and just playing the games that I want to play and whenever I have a really cool idea for a video, just making that, I think that's going to be really awesome. I do have so many ideas for videos on Total Warhammer though. I have a list of like 30, 40 ideas. It's crazy. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. And worry not, I will get back to making videos on Total Warhammer fairly soon. Like within a month for sure. And that's all. Peace out.